today we are going to share some of the key management issues with Uber. My name is Sean Sharada. I'm Ainsley Polk. I'm Bryce Whitney. I'm Sean Curran. And I'm Caitlin Neely. Today we are going to share some of the key management issues with Uber. The two managerial issues that we found within Uber was the lack of senior leadership and the work culture. Now I'm going to hand it off to Ainsley. When di diagnosing Uber, we came across a former employee named Susan Fowler. She was a former engineer for the company, and she spoke out against the culture of the company. After this, many others began, began to come forward about the sexual harassment, illegal behavior, and the blind eye they received from the Human Resource Department. They also experienced the same thing that Susan experienced. Many of these issues involved the senior leadership of the company. We found that there is a lack of ethics, ethics within Uber, which was discussed in Chapter 4. It is the inner guiding moral principle, values, beliefs, and routines that influence workers. We also found an error in their organizational structure, which was discussed in Chapter 10. Um, the organizational architect architecture was off. How effective and efficient the resources were being used was not right. The Human Resource Department simply wasn't doing their job. Susan discusses a time that she came forward to the Human Resources Department about sexual harassment and the best they could do was give him a stern talking to and maybe a warning. And that is when that team ultimately felt her. And it ultimately felt its company because it now has an issue with an, its organizational com, uh, culture, which is the shared set of beliefs, expectations, values, and norms that workers use to achieve its goals. It's sometimes referred to as the personality of the company. And this organization has been compared to also a frat-like environment from past employees. Now I'm going to hand it off to Sean to discuss the solution to these issues. As a group, we identified three qualities we think Uber should look for when choosing their new leaders. Three key qualities candidates should have are high tolerance for stress, dominance, and integrity and honesty. Leading a major company is no small task to begin with, but throw in the managerial issues Uber faces and it makes a tough job even tougher. The new leaders of Uber need to be able to handle high stress situations and come out with the best solution for each arising problem. They also need to be able to assert dominance over the company. Good leaders need to be friendly and personable, but also need to be able to bring down the hammer when it's needed. With the issues in management being such a big problem, cracking down on employees is necessary for Uber to continue to move forward as a company. Integrity and honesty are also incredibly important qualities Uber should be looking for in their new leaders. Evaluating the issues within Uber and being open about the issues is really important. The new leaders need to be able to give an honest evaluation of the company and recognize all of the issues in the company. After determining the desired qualities of the new leaders, Uber needs to think about where they want to look for the right candidates. There are perks and detriments for both internal and external recruiting. However, Uber should look for towards external recruiting to look for its new leaders. With the many managerial issues and lower management, looking internally may cause even more problems than there already are. Looking externally would allow new ideas to come into the company, create a leadership based around a good set of standards and beliefs. The best way to find the right candidates is to look for the people who have experience in high stress situations. Interviewing experienced candidates will make it easier to find the right fit for, some, for the job. Someone with prior experience at a high level position is key. Hiring a young professional could generate new ideas, but a lack of experience could cause them to break down trying to solve all of Uber's problems. An older, more experienced leader would be able to command respect from lower level managers more so than a young leader would be able to. Commanding some respect and asserting some dominance while not being too harsh would have managers more willing to listen to their new leaders. Leaders who are open and honest will create a trust between themselves and Uber's lower level managerial staff. Interviewing older, more experienced candidates should be the first step when looking for Uber's new leaders. In Chapter 14, we discussed several contingency models of leadership. We have, we have suggested that Uber focus on House's path goal theory in order to push the company in the right direction. House's path goal theory proposes three points of how effective leaders can motivate their subordinates and achieve their company goals. Point one is clearly identifying the outcomes the subordinates are trying to obtain from their jobs. Point two is rewarding subordinates with these outcomes for high performance and attainment of those work goals. And point three is clarifying the path leading to the attainment of those work goals as well. Once the new leaders are chosen, implementing House's path goal theory is the next step for Uber to move forward as a company. Going along with the first point, managers should be striving to be more ethical with those that they manage. With the 
copious amounts of reports that have been filed, something in Uber's management needs to be changed. The best course of action that Uber should take is to provide mandatory ethics trainings for all of its managers. Managers should have to attend trainings that cover topics such as non-discriminatory phrasing, how to reprimand employees not following Uber's mission statements, and how to create a good work environment. Going to the second point, rewarding management and other employees for giving exceptional efforts to reduce cases of harassment and discrimination is a good way for Uber to clean up managerial issues. Giving managers and their subordinates incentives such as travel, extra paid time off, or something as simple as gift baskets for the office will promote desirable outcomes. Many companies already make use of an incentivized contest and offer employees rewards for outstanding performances. And I think this would also be beneficial for Uber to implement as well. For the third point, the new leaders of Uber need to be setting the right precedent when they come into the company as their leaders. Setting the standard for other workers should be a big focus of Uber's new lead leaders by leading by example, and that will garner more respect and honesty from its employees. Something as simple as volunteering at charitable events would be a great way for uh, the new leaders to set their standards for its employees. When the workers see the charitable deeds, it should make them proud to work for the company they do, while hopefully encouraging them to engage in similar activities. So the next step in our plan was action. Um, we had two different problems that we had to address. The first was the lack of leadership. Um, there's different steps that we were going to take for this. The first was having an independent chairs person. They would serve as a check on Uber's management. Um, they would just basically make sure that everything is going on good. Going good. Um, make, we want it to be random so that everyone's kind of on their toes and having good performance most of the time. Um, and then after this, they would need to provide feedback and then take the steps to fix whatever needs to be fixed. Um, after that, we would look at the employees within the company and basically see, make sure that the right employees are in the right position. Um, again, have feedback on that, on the management, and determine how well they're doing. The issues from the feed, uh, feedback need to be addressed immediately so that everything's taken care of. The next issue was the organizational culture is kind of out of tune. Um, some ways to fix this, the main would just be having a human resource, human resource team um, to stop like inappropriate values from starting, make sure everyone's living up to the standards, and we need to make sure we're updating policies so they're not, um, you know, just old. And, um, for the HR team, what we want to look into is basically see if they need a refresher course so that they know how to handle different issues within the workforce. Um, they can also see about development from an outside course. And if they're not seeing eye to eye with the business or the company, they just basically need to be let go. Um, after this, we would plan on checking over the systems that are in place. Are the policies preventing discrimination and harassment? Are they outdated? If so, update them so they're providing a safe and fair environment. And the next step would be to retrain the employees. Uh, we would work on the employees and the managers and explain to them the correct way to do their job and the ethical way to deal with customers. Let it be known that if there are any problems, they can talk about it and get it fixed. HR is there to make work best as it can that can be for you. Um, we can also need to fix the recruiting and hiring process. This is a big thing because it's what makes sure that you have the right employees for the right job. Um, when you're advertising the job position that's available, advertise it in fitting places such as a professional business or universities, and then have correct interview techniques. So look for red flags such as like problems with their last job. So switching gears now over to the evaluation section. First, to evaluate whether or not the solutions we implemented were successful, we have to de first develop a way to gauge that success. So we thought a good way to do this would be to gain feedback from both, both customers and employees about how they feel if the company has changed or if they feel it has not changed at all. And to do this, we will um, provide them with surveys and questionnaires to gain that information. Um, and we must do that regularly to ensure that these problems don't arise again. 
Human resources and the HR department play a huge role in this when collecting that information from current employees. Um, another uh, useful tool that we can use is benchmarking, and that is comparing performance on specific dimensions with the performance of high-performing organizations to decide how sex successful a change effort has been. So in this case, the company that we could compare performance with would be Lyft, which is another industry leader in that category of uh, business. And um, this is mentioned in chapter 11 of the textbook. And we could compare using, on those specific dimensions, we could um, compare them with like harassment and discrimination um, issues that Uber has been dealing with internally. So in conclusion, the two main problems that we found in Uber were the lack of leadership, especially in the upper level management, and the work culture at Uber, which has been compared to a frat-like culture. Um, the solutions that we found include identifying important personal char characteristics in top management for future employees to shift uh, away from the current view on Uber. Um, another solution we found was externally recruiting, um, just to get a new perspective and to show that the company is changing and going in a new direction. And finally, House's Path Goal Theory, which covers mandatory ethics training incentives and fixing the HR department. Um, after identifying the solutions that could be taken, uh, the actions that we must take um, are develop an independent chairs person, to evaluate the positions of current employees, develop a strong HR department, retrain employees on the company's ethics policies, and remodel the any interview process to filter out unethical people. We feel it is crucial that Uber take a harsher internal view in order to identify and stop these problems from happening again in order to create a better company for both customers and employees. And that concludes the presentation. Thank you.